A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is who has spoke of true the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight path for him. John's clothing was made of camel hair, and he had a leather belt around him, his waist. His foot was locust and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. Then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to t turn him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It's possible for us to do this to fulfill our righteousness. Then John consented the gospel of Christ. I'm going, to ask, I'm going to ask the kids to come on up again. Second time today. But I need help helping the adults. So come on up. Give me a hand, please. <clears throat> yeah, come on up. I'm lonely up here. That's great. Super. Because i got some questions for you guys. This microphone, that's so you guys can speak to the whole congregation this morning. So just find a seat up here anywhere on the floor. That's great. Okay, while you're coming up, I'm just going to read this verse from Philippians. Do nothing from selfish ambition or self-promotion, but in humility regard others in higher esteem than yourselves. Look not to your own interests, but instead look to the interests of others. Now, there's some big adult words in there that we are going to make a, bit, a little bit simpler later. But just look, see those last words there? But in, now I'm using two microphones, and Stephen's back there thinking, Chris, you don't need to use two microphones. <laughs> so I'm turning that one off for now. There you go. So now you can see up there on the screen there, but instead look to the interests of others. Okay, those are some big words, but I'm just wondering if you can help us understand. Any idea? Anyone want to tell us what, what that might mean? Look to the interests of others. Aaron. Well, it means to, to uh, look to the interests of others. <laughs> <laughs> you have a gift for getting to the core of the text. Excellent. What might be the interests of others? What kind of interest? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes. I'm sure, definitely. And what else might be in the interest of others? So what are the needs of others? Let's go with that word. Hey, Kalo, come on over, Kalo. Other people needing sharing? Sharing? Yes, absolutely. Actually, you've just, you've just done my whole sermon for me. Thank you. Uh, so let's move on here. I'm going to show you a video. And, uh, well, some questions. We'll talk about it afterwards. And there I am, using two mics again. Let's take a look at that video. Here we go. It's about four minutes. Sometimes bad things happen to us and to the people we love. It's times like these when we are so happy we have hospitals, nurses, and doctors to take care of us. Hi, I'm Adriana, and welcome to Kids in Action, where we meet Christian kids doing God's work now. Today, I'm meeting my new friend, Emma, who made a difficult hospital visit into a way to help others. 
It's Kids in Action, finding ways to show God's love to those in bad times. When I was eight years old, my brother ended up in the hospital emergency room. When I was looking around in the waiting room, I saw all these sad kids. I wanted to help them, and I wanted to make them happy. So what did you do? I decided to make activity kits for the waiting room kids. Each kit had crayons, a fun mask, and coloring pages. I put them into a pencil kit and handed them out in the waiting room. Why a mask? Because when I was younger, I liked superheroes, and my family called me Super Emma. So each kid had a fun mask. That way, the waiting room kids could be heroes too. What happened when you went back to the hospital? We handed out 20 kids that day. The children's hospital was super excited to receive them. How did that make you feel? I was happy that other people could feel good. I thought it was an easy idea that everybody can do. That's a big deal, helping people who are dealing with a medical crisis. Where did that lead you next? My family and I discovered Ronald McDonald House. Sometimes families have one of their kids in the hospital, but they live far away. They can stay at Ronald McDonald House. People who use it sometimes have to come to the hospital in a hurry and don't have time to pack. I wanted to pay for a meal for all the families, so I needed to do some fundraisers for them. Once I raised the money, my family and friends made a meal, and we're doing it again this fall. How do you fundraise? Last time, my family and I ran an Easter egg hunt and a carnival. Today, Emma rented a table at a local mom to mom sale. And I went for part of the day to help. Emma did a great job talking about helping families and about Ronald McDonald House. She made customers smile as she showed off her bath bombs and she had a great sales pitch. The blue one's great for sinuses and hearing the bath. Oh. It's been a great day so far. Glad it's going well. We've now got enough money you needed to host a meal. A few days later, and with her check in hand, Emma arrived at the local Ronald McDonald House. So we provide a home away from home for families who have children who are receiving critical care at local children's hospitals. Every year we provide uh, this home for over 700 families with accommodations, with hot nutritious meals, with laundry services, other programming uh, to help make their time a little bit easier. We also have 100,000 families that we support over in our Ronald McDonald family rooms on an annual basis and it's truly because of people like Emma, uh, community champions who provide these comforts of home for our families who truly need it the most. I hope this donation will help pay for the meals tonight. Uh, well, thank you so much. This is really, really appreciated. Emma's mom and grandparents helped prepare the meal. It was a great night for families going through tough times. Emma isn't old enough to help out yet, so we decided to have one last chat. <laughs> Emma, why do you do all this fundraising? Because I want people to be happy. Sometimes people are in need, and this is our way to show God's love. A Bible verse that really inspires Emma is Mark 9, verse 35, where Jesus tells his disciples that if anyone wants to be first, they must be the very last and the servant of all. It's a great verse because it's about putting other people first, to have people in need, to be a light in a world of darkness. So all this work is a way for me to show my light. Great. So... Got a question for you. What did you like in that video? Adora. Um, I like that Emma was helping other people out when they needed When they needed help. Well, yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, Brianna. I'm happy that Emma made people happy. That's great. Because she was helping their needs, wasn't she? Now, I'm going to put this microphone down. And let's talk about a couple of other things. We can help people as individuals, so we can look to the interests of individuals. That means we can help individuals, such as maybe a friend at school who's having difficulty, or a neighbor, or a family member. <clears throat> and we can also help the needs of society as a whole, and think about our whole society. And there's a word out there, some of the adults might know, which I think is really important today, is, is another phrase for that, the common good. And so there's a lot of people today in, you know, in different parts of society saying, think about yourself only. But following Jesus, we actually need to look to the common good 
the, the welfare and the well-being of everyone. And so, here's how I've changed the words of Philippians just to make it a little understandable for us. So, in your attitude, be like Jesus. Though he had super high status because he was God, he did not exploit, that means use, this status and high position for his own advantage. Because that's what we as people usually do. Uh, <clears throat> and in fact, Arya's testimony was a lot about people like that. Instead, what did Jesus do? He emptied himself. He emptied himself of what? What does it say there? Of pride, of self-importance, of becoming human, to be a servant, to serve the needs of others. And I think those are some of the most powerful words in the New Testament, because that will turn upside down our world and our society if we live like that. And so, I just want to introduce you to one more new word today. Anyone know this word? Have you ever seen this word? You come across it at school or anywhere? Okay, this is from the Bantu language in Africa. And it... It can be translated, you know, different ways, but this is a common way of translating it. I am because we are. What does that mean? Any idea what that might mean? I am because we are. Well, it means when everyone is doing well, then we are doing well, and then I am doing well. So, if, in other words, for everyone to be doing well, we need to develop sharing together. We really need to be concerned for sharing and, and serving the needs of others, being concerned. So it means I cannot be at my best when others aren't at their best. So I need to help my group or society do well. And then I'm also doing well. We need each other and we need to serve each other so that all of us can be well. How, what do you think of that? So you can remember that word Ubuntu. And uh, let's, can you, let's try to say that. Can you say that? Ubuntu. Let's all try it. Ubuntu. Um, I am because we are. And so, <clears throat> let's see, what do I have here? So, three lessons today. Have the same attitude as Jesus. Okay. Means serving the interests of others, the whole community or society. And I am because we are. I'm doing well because we're all doing well. So I do my part to make sure others are doing well themselves. How does that sound? Is that okay? Yes. You like that? Yes. You know what? I'm going to lead us in prayer because I think that's actually one of the most important teachings in, um, in, in Scripture. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, sometimes, uh, well, often we do need to um, look after our own needs. But that can be easily our focus. And that becomes so strong in us that we forget to serve the needs of others and care for the common good. And we ask, Lord, that you give us a heart to serve others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, thank you. You can head back to your seats now. And we are going to continue in prayer with, well, we're not. We're going to stand. And we're going to recommit ourselves to the commands that Jesus taught us. Please stand. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one.